Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in Internet Shitlords. And uh, today I'm going to be <laughs> talking about a, um, a, a topic that has become kind of popular recently, which is about timekeeping. And uh, so you might have seen a lot of videos recently that talk about how you must keep precise track of time and that's the true way to play and all of that sort of thing. Um, and uh, I'm here to, to give a slightly different message from the one that, that has been popularized by certain extremist groups. <laughs> so uh, there's that. Um, if this is the first video you're watching, well, be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be informed of when I'm doing live streams or when I've made a community post or something like that, don't don't forget to check out my my uh, posts on on this channel for more pictures of Meatball and other interesting things. Oh, I said her her name and she's coming rushing down the stairs. I don't know if she'll pop in. She probably will. She'll just want to make a cameo appearance here. Um, and uh, anyways, the the thing is. Recently, there's been, you know, there's this one ridiculous movement called the, the Bro SR that aside from having some, some serious issues with their, their leadership, having basically wanting to inject politics into, into the gaming culture, um, they're also, uh, they're this kind of weird cult that wants to create a fake version of what of what the old school way of playing was, which is like this version of AD and D that they claim is rules is written, but in fact has a bunch of stuff that is largely their interpretation of their leader. And one of these is this emphasis, because in the AD and D rule book, it does say that you should take careful track of time, and that that on the whole is a pretty sensible piece of advice, especially for the type of games that were typical of an AD&D first edition campaign and what it was set up to do. Um, but they've taken this to interpret, they've made some interpretations that have nothing to do with what Gary Gygax really intended there. Um, it, and, and I'm not really going to dedicate this video to getting into their weird ideas of like one day in the game world equals one day in real time and stuff like that. Oh, Meatball has arrived. <laughs> Hello, Meatball. Yeah, tongue. <laughs> He's always got a great tongue. Um, so, uh, but I, instead, I'm going to talk about the actual subject of timekeeping, right? And fundamentally, because a lot of people, a lot of you know, even non bro SR people that are in in making OSR uh, YouTube videos or OSR adjacent YouTube videos, are now kind of they've gotten on the bandwagon and think of this as like this is an actual real um, ironclad secret rule that must be applied, right? Um, that you must always keep meticulous track of, of time in a, in a campaign. And, you know, obviously part of why this has happened is because in a lot of new school products, including, you know, D&D 5th edition and, you know, basically all the, the newer editions of D&D, um, very little attention is given to keep the importance of keeping track of time in a campaign, which is obviously an important thing in some sense or another for, for almost every campaign. You know, unless you're playing a campaign that's completely disconnected from the concept of time somehow, you pretty much do have to keep track of time in some way. However, the idea that there's one specific way to keep track of time is stupid, okay? You need to, to keep exactly as much track of time as the type of campaign you're running requires. That's the real rule, okay? Whatever it does actually require, and it'll depend on the nature of your campaign, which, which will depend partly on the game you're running, but it'll also depend on the, the, the type, the way you're running it, the type of setting that you're using and, and, and the way that the campaign works. Um, time has to be kept in some way or another. But, um, you know, like the, in, in D&D, what was intended there when Gary Gygax wrote that in the AD&D first edition book, um, it was a, a a product of the fact that most D&D games at that time involved significant amounts of dungeon crawling or careful wilderness travel, and they worked on a campaign scale 
where you were going day to day in the adventuring essentially right so if if it you know if you had to travel from point a to point b you know from the city to the wilderland or whatever and you had to figure out the, the amount of travel time and you had to mark that travel time in certain ways especially because D D, in the old school at least it's not so much in the new school which is a kind of a problem in a way uh, in the old school it was certainly a game of resource management as well right you had to buy supplies in the city you had to travel along and you had to therefore keep track of your rations you had to keep track of your encumbrance right those are equally important in an old school style classic D campaign as much as keeping track of time you have to make sure that you're keeping track of you know where are you carrying everything and how how much does it weigh and how much food supplies do you have and where are you picking up more, right? Those are all very important parts because resource management is a big feature of old school play, okay? And then you'd get into the dungeon. And in the dungeon, you had to keep track of time in even more meticulous ways because, you know, spells had durations. Some of those were only rounds, but some of them were what you'd call turns, right? So a turn was 10 minutes, you know? Um, and And so you'd have to know... How much, okay, the players go into a, a room. They're searching the room. How long does it take them to search the room? Because, you know, if somebody's got a shield spell up and that shield spell lasts 20 minutes, you need to know how much time is left on it by the time they're done searching the room. Because in terms of what's going on at the meta level and the, on the table is that someone says, okay, I'm going to search the room, right? And you might ask, you know, depending on what type of game you're running, you might ask them, well, how are you searching? Or you might tell them, do a, a perception check or something like that, right? And, and so that can be resolved very quickly at the mechanical level on the table. But in the setting, you have to presume that searching takes some time. It's not that they just pop in and look at it, unless, you know, you, you describe what they immediately see. But presumably, if they're searching, they're looking for something more, right? If they're resting, you have to know how long they're resting for because there are chances of encounters with, with random monsters, you know, and you have to keep track of that. You have to, you have to make a note of time in the context of the dungeon as a part of resource management, okay? So if you're running that kind of campaign, that's the kind of time that you have to keep track of, right? And even again, you know, in, in old d if you were like out of the dungeon, you've gone back to the city, you've completed a dungeon, let's say, then your players might be doing certain things, right? Because in, in some versions of the rules, in ad d for example, you had to, to do training or study or things like that before leveling up. So that would take certain periods of time, sometimes weeks. There were some spells that you might require to, to spend time on, right? All of that sort of thing. So you had to know, you know, well, what's everyone doing during this period? If the wizard has to spend 10 days or 14 days or whatever um, researching stuff to level up, then what are the other guys doing in that time? And they can't exceed that time, but you, want, you need to know, okay, well, what are you doing in that period? Right. If you're doing a day-to-day -day campaign, especially in that type of fantasy game, you need to keep track of it in that way, in that way in particular. You know, um, But then there are other games where that's not going to be the way that you're running things. There's still going to be ways of keeping track of time that are going to be necessary, but it, but it won't necessarily <laughs> be in that same way. You know? So if, you know, when I'm, when I'm running... For example, a my, my Sword and Caravan campaign, um, which I'm currently running, a Sword and Caravan campaign, it is it's very important for me to keep track of travel time, right? Because they're they're going in this campaign. It's a group of uh, adventurers, you could say, that are that are traveling along the Silk Road. They're they're um, they're basically acting as the 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 team, the the accompaniment of a learned monk who has been tasked to travel all along the Silk Road to find lost Christian communities and bring them back into communication with the Holy See. Okay, so that's their mission. So they're going all along. It's a traveling campaign. They're going from one city to another, trying to find these Christian communities. And along the way, they're having all kinds of crazy adventures, right? Um, because most of them, they're all, they're all, you know, on board with that, with that plan. But most of them are also looking for action and for treasure and for, you know, uh, making their fortune and fame. Okay, so I need to keep track of that campaign at the level of day-to-day -day campaign. It's it's happening in, in in real time, let's say, in the context of the game, that 
uh, we're not skipping ahead as a rule. We're, you know, it's you know, if, if you ended the game on August 16th, 1192, the next session starts in the morning of August 17th, 1192. Yeah, and so you have to know how much time it's taking to travel. There is an ele- elements of resource management going on. You know, they have to watch their money purse. They have to figure out how much. Uh, how much they need to take with them in supplies, right? They have a wagon, all that, all that sort of thing. So all that has to be taken into account. And uh, that, that's very important at that level. Um, in combat, obviously, it's important to keep track of combat rounds. But it is not, for example, important in, a, in that sort of caravan campaign. Um, most of the time, there might be exceptions. Most of the time, it's not that important for them to keep track of turns, you know, so because they're... they're uh, you know, when they're traveling from one city to another, you're checking for events and encounters that happen over the course of a day. So you don't need to, to go back to, you know, f- figuring things out in 10 minute increments like you would perhaps in a D&D dungeon, you know. Um, and I, I just finished running a Lion and Dragon campaign that uh, was set in like mythic Arthurian Britain. And in that campaign... Uh, the, the adventures were, were happening year to year, right? So uh, the, there was an adventure in one year. The players, you know, sometimes there's more than one. Sometimes there might be two or three adventures in a year um, where they're, they're being sent out on missions because they were part of the, the retinue of a, of, a, of a banner at night. Um, and they were, they were kind of specialists in hunting monsters and things like that, right? So they, when, when, when they were told that they need to go check something out, of course, there were some, a lot of the adventures in Old School Companion have to do with like investigating monsters or, or cults or things like that, dangers to the kingdom, right? So I used a lot of the, the adventures in there in modified form in that campaign as well. Um, and uh, you'd go and you'd do that adventure, right? And of course, there, when they're traveling, again, the same things apply as they do in my Sword and Caravan game. But in between that, what I need to figure out is what they're doing in the course of a year, right? From from the last adventure to the next, let's say, you know, which is sometimes it might be less than a year because, like I said, some 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 years you might have more than one adventure, but let's say in general, a large span of time goes by during which time they're in the castle of their lord, right, in the the keep that he's in charge of, and and they they have downtime, let's call it, right? So so there you need to keep track of time, but you're you're keeping track of time in weeks and months. You know, and you, you, unless a player is trying to do a lot of stuff or things where there would be potential conflicts with other players' agendas or things like that, then you don't need to be as meticulous, you know. If you're running a modern campaign, it depends on how you run it. You know, I've got the Invisible College here. And so in the Invisible College, you're running a game in the modern day, basically, unless you're, you know, you could run it in theory in, in other time periods. But the default is that you're playing a modern day campaign. And in that context, you're, if you're running the game, it's, it's kind of less common that you'd run that kind of game on a day-to-day basis. More often, a game like that is going to be episodic, right? So you're, you're going to be saying, well, you know, it's been several, several months since the last time you guys had a mission or several weeks or whatever. Um, so you don't necessarily, again, need to keep track as meticulously of time and moment to moment, especially depending on how cinematically you're running the game. Because you can run an Invisible College game in a somewhat grittier, kind of more um, real, real life-like way, where there, at least in the adventure and such, you're going to have to take maybe slightly more attentive care of time. And also some missions might have be time sensitive, right? You have 24 hours before the X happens, you know. So you have to keep track of it in that sense, right? But you definitely don't have to be keeping track of it in the same sense that you would um, a, D- a classic D&D dungeon crawl. So, so this is the, the real thing to consider when you're keeping track of time. You've got to look at what type of game you're running and how you want to track time in it. And you have to figure out, and the, the, the way to figure out what you should be doing is look at what it is that actually matters in the context of your game. Because, uh, for example, in Invisible College and in a lot of modern games, you're not going to be keeping track of dollars and cents in the same way that in D&D, you're keeping track of every gold and silver piece you have. 
So that resource management element is quite different, right? So a lot of modern games, including in the Invisible College, um, have instead the idea that you have a certain wealth level, and that depend that determines what you can per what your purchasing power is, your credit, and things like that, what you can afford. And so you, you're not once that element of resource management disappears, right? So like you're you're not keeping track of every piece of treasure you have. Um, that eliminates part of the time requirement, right? So that these things are interconnected because uh, if you're keeping track of time in any way, it's a type of resource management. Time is a resource. So you have to look at what other resources you need to manage. And then you need to look at what things are specifically time sensitive, so to say, right? So if you, you know, in Invisible College, one way that you might need to keep track of time is that there are certain magical techniques that take a period of time before you can actually use them, right? So you start to study uh, a certain type of, of technique, mesmerism or, um, or, or the I Ching or something like that. And it's X number of days or weeks of study before you can start actually using that, that magical practice. And so you need to know whether enough time has passed so that the player character can now use that ability and has mastered that ability, let's say. And in that context, if you're running a game where you have concurrent adventures that are running close to each other, then you would have to, to bring that into the factor because that would be part of the resource management. If, if you know, you have, you assume that there's there's months in between adventures, then you probably don't need to worry about that either. You just say, well, next by next adventure, he'll know this, right? Right now he doesn't. Um, and it's as simple as that. So, so don't get stuck on this idea that like there's no point <laughs> in doing super meticulous time management for its own sake. It has to be for a purpose, right? Everything you, you include in a game rule, this is a big part of game design, is that um, the things you include in a game rule ought to be things that have a purpose to, to um, gamify, right? If, if not... You're just adding extra steps for no reason. So ask yourself, what are the reasons why we need to keep track of time or why we need to keep track of resources? If there isn't a good reason, don't do it. Right? If there is a good reason, then you should do it. You should do it according to the way that is necessary for that reason to keep track of these resources. All right. So I guess that's, that's everything I wanted to comment on this subject. Um, and uh, if you like this video, again, please share it anywhere that you think people will find it interesting or that it'll p piss people off for that matter. <laughs> and uh, again, subscribe and be sure to check out all of my stuff. If you want to, to support me, if you want to support this channel, I mean, now we do have like super chats and things like that going on, but, um, but it, it, you know, the, the way I think the best way to support me and get something out of the deal is to check out all my products, right? My games, I'm quite proud of them. They're really great. And you're going to enjoy them too. I'm fairly sure of that, especially if you're, you know, if you're a, a classic gamer, my games do not have political messages, you know, one way or the other. Um, they have significant themes, but none of those themes are, are meant to be bashing an ideology over your head, whether it's left or right wing ideology, you know, um, they're, and they're, they're all meant in the context of like what I just said in this video they're all meant to be playable first because, you know, some people think, well, you know, these games like Sword and Caravan or Lion and Dragon, this medieval authentic stuff, um, that it's going to be more about like some kind of boring history exercise rather than than being playable. No, they're meant to be absolutely playable. I am trying to make the setting as kick-ass as possible for for what it's really good at. And, and in every case, I'm putting the playability of, of the material first. You know, um, and it, that, it's not that hard to do with history, right? So, like, you don't have to be a history major to like my games. You know, now if you if you buy my games and if you read them, you're going to learn a lot about history, at least in in the historical authentic products that I make. You know, uh, but that's kind of a bonus because you're going to learn it in a fun way, I think. But yeah, the point isn't to teach you history. The point is to make a really interesting, exciting game, and that's that's the goal. That's what I like. You know. Um, but I do also have non-historical products like uh, World of the Last Sun, you know, well, the Invisible College is a modern day setting. It does have historical stuff to it because of, you know, the occultism and secret societies and all that are, not, all of mine aren't made up. They're all kind of based or at least inspired by real history. 
um, Star Adventure, if you want some cool space opera, all that sort of thing, right? So, but check out all of the links to all of my products are in the description. If you expand the description, if you're using the app, you look at more, you press a little more thing and it'll, it'll scroll out all the links to my stuff and uh, be sure to check it out. You're going to find products that you're going to find exciting and interesting, you know, whether you're looking for adventures, like what you'll get in the old school companion that you can use in any OSR product, right? That's the wonders of the OSR is that it's all compatible. Uh, or you're looking for um, game content that you can port into your own campaign, right? Like you don't need to run Lion and Dragon to play Sword and Caravan. You don't even need to run Sword and Caravan to use Sword and Caravan because there's a bunch of stuff you're going to be able to rip off there and put into your own settings, you know? And uh, same thing, obviously, with something like the Gonzo Fantasy Companion, which is a bunch of material that you can plug and play at your at your leisure in any of your in any of your games, you know? So check all that out. Thank you very much. And uh, currently smoking uh, Lorenzetti Half Volcano plus Argento Roots. It's in there somewhere. I'm almost done.